that IED initiated ambush kicks off, PKM machine guns start going off, RPGs are skipping off hoods and slamming into vehicles. Like that was the beginning of a three day gunfight. The Czechs wanted to get into fights. So like me traveling and, and deploying and going with the Czechs off, for example, into Firebase Anaconda, like they wanted to get into gunfights. No um, shit, I never even, I never worked with the Czechs. Dude, they're bad. Are they? <laughs> Yeah, a bunch of Viking blooded dudes. Hey, that, like, I, did, I never giants. got the opportunity. I've seen the I've seen the Polacks. I've seen the similar. And uh, those boys were hungry. Yeah, but yeah. I never, yeah, never saw the checks. K- kind of same vibe between okay. the two of them. You know, they're okay. like the like the the Gru and and checks off both have that like something to prove Eastern Bloc anxiety of post USSR where like they got a, they have a chip on their shoulder they want to know how to fight they want to bring lessons learned from combat back to their homes but you have to be in eastern europe when you have russia knocking on your door often um and then making incursions into crimea into ukraine and and um for you to understand the the permanent anxiety that these special operations guys have because it's on them, right? Like, you can say NATO all you want, but if Russia came to the Polish border, which they were trying to push through, you know, like when they got all the way to Kiev and they're looking at moving all the way up into Poland, um, Poland was positioned to find a line in the sand and stand there and die on it. Like, you'd have to step over the bodies of every single Polish special operations guy if you're a Russian soldier trying to invade Poland. And they have had that for 20 years. Yeah. So then they get to go to war, but they haven't been in war, like real war, and now they want to prove their tactics, their procedures. They want to make sure that their equipment is right, they're using the right ammo, all the things that you learn from war, they're trying to perfect there. The Czech and the Poles um, were maybe the the most hungry. Yeah, yeah. Did you? So, oh, what's yeah. it like going out with those guys? They uh, don't shoot at them. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they also don't have the same scrutiny. You know, this is two thousand eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now we're peak Afghanistan war. I went from like peak Af- Iraq war to you know two thousand. Seven, eight, nine is peak Afghanistan war. And um, if you're on, you know, if, if we're moving, we're, we're, we're on a, a GAF, a ground assault force, we're in vehicles moving towards a target, and that target starts shooting at the ground assault force, they're just going to level the target. You know, like this is the war that we're at now. It's not mm-hmm. like, hey, let's continue to roll up and hit them in a dynamic entry, it's like, cool, let's stop. And we're just going to drop bombs and mortars on top of these guys. And then we're going to cruise down as maneuver elements and pick up the bodies. You know, this is, uh, um, we got blown up as Valley and Ur is gone with the checks. And, uh, it was a IED initiated ambush and, they had positioned a few hundred foreign fighters and Taliban in this valley with this intent of taking out the entire Czech special operations, the special forces ODA that was escorting them to Firebase Anaconda, um, and all of the resupply that was going to keep them at this firebase throughout the winter. So there's this gigantic caravan of Jenga trucks, and then the Czech special operations forces and the American escorts to there. And I was the liaison to the Czech special forces. Okay. Uh, This is just an example of like the different types of missions that I went on as that USASOC sniper liaison. From the time that initiated, um, that IED initiated ambush kicks off, PKM machine guns start going off, RPGs are skipping off hoods and slamming into vehicles. Like that was the beginning of a three day gunfight. Um, and if, if you're doing your, your battlefield damage assessment, you know, you're, you're looking at a few hundred dead foreign fighters. Damn. Um, you know, the vehicle in front of me 
gets disintegrated. Everybody inside of it dies. You know, like purple hands, hearts were handed out to like, not handed out. That's not the right word. <laughs> um, everybody gets purple hearts from this mission. Um, you know, shrapnel in the back and the necks. We're in villages as we're moving from there all the way to Firebase Anaconda. Every time that we move to the next village, we're having to fight door to door building to building to get through this village. And you couldn't go around this village because around the outsides of these villages, they had put IEDs. Damn. And, uh, so it was just like- And you're with the checks. Yeah. How are you communicating with them? How are you integrating with their tactics? I would mostly talk to the Americans about where we were and where we were going. And I would just observe what the checks were doing or how they were maneuvering. And then I would con communicate to the team sergeant of the special forces ODA about, hey, we're going to be heading, you know, like we're, we're going northwest. Our azimuth is this right now. Um, we're going to be moving to this position. And the company commander spoke broken English, but English enough, where he would relay to his unit that would be maneuvering to a, a new position. And then he'd give me like the bluff. He'd give me the wave tops. You know, like this is the bottom line up front. We're moving to this hill and we're going to be providing suppressive fire. Uh, as the ODA is going to be moving to the south. So I'd call the ODA, be like, hey, we're moving up to this hill. This is going to be the grid coordinates. Um, and uh, and I'll give you intel from this position as we go. And that would be rapidly changing. And I would always be struggling into find, figuring out like what the heck is going on right now. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> I mean, I got to be honest, this sounds like a pretty good... Mission set to me. I mean, so you're you're basically a strap hanger for anybody that's doing shit. That's right. I got to. Was it hard to integrate in with these units and, nah. and get them to say, "Yeah, we want them on the op." No, you. I mean, um, you know, you the you pass a sniff test. You go into the pre mission briefing, and um, you ask a few of the right questions, and you know. How am I going to be an asset? Where would you like me? How would you like me to communicate? What kind of information do you want me to relay to the Americans? Um, like, here are some capabilities that I have in calling for fire. This is um, the equipment that I'm bringing with me. Um, is this appropriate where I would be useful if I have the stuff? Is there other stuff that you would like me to have that I do have that I can bring if you'd like? You know, the, those type of things really um, build immediate rapport when you're having kind of an outsider come into your unit. Um, they, they also recognized the value of having that American special operations liaison. You know, they, if you want air support and you are a uh, French special operations and you're trying to call for American call for fire, that's mm -hmm. hard, right? But then you have a me there where I can just pick up my phone and be like, my figurative phone and be like, Hey, this is where we're at. This is what we need. This is where I need it. Send it. And it's done. So like they, they recognize the, the value in that. So with the right questions and the right kind of immediate rapport building, and I would also bounce you know, each one of the different nationalities had their own bases. When you got to like Bagram or Kandahar, they were all segregated into like the Italians were here, you know, the French were here, the British were here. Do you remember? Like, uh, I remember. So I was... I would, I would go and spend, I'd go have dinners with them. I would, uh, you know, like if there's a soccer game happening, I would go and hang out with them. And uh, I was able to go outside of the wire and uh, acquire things that help build rapport with foreign units. Um, so, I, you know, I'd bring a bottle of wine or, I'd, you know, like things that are hard to come by in Afghanistan. I'd bring and show up with, you know, some salted meats and uh, for a soccer game and, and then, you know, you're, I was E6 with, you know, a combat patch, recently came from Afghanistan. I got a Ranger tab. Like, they know that I'm the Special Forces sniper. So, there, there were, it wasn't as hard to build that initial rapport, you know, like thinking back to my dad about, like, how to break down barriers. Um, I came bearing gifts. Um, I kept my mouth shut, asked questions when appropriate, and uh, looked for opportunities to contribute. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.